Hi, welcome to Girl Talk with Brandy. I am a licensed professional counselor and I'm also a certified life coach. Um, my motto is every woman needs a little girl talk. Girl talk, um, girl talk is therapy. I, I honestly believe that girl talk is therapy. I often tell people, tell women that other than prayer, if you're praying, if you are a praying woman, other than prayer, oftentimes it was girl talk that got you through some of the most difficult times in your life. Um, whether it was you calling your girlfriends on the phone, uh, maybe you guys meeting up face to face, having you know dinner and drinks, but it allowed you an opportunity to vent to share um, some of your struggles, to be transparent. Um, and again, that girl talk helped you get through, okay? I believe in the power of prayer, and I also believe that God will send you people that can either be a listening ear or it can even um, provide you with, um, I guess, sound advice, um, wisdom um you know um yeah sound sound counsel okay so again i'm all about girl talk um like i said girl talk is for grown women every woman needs a little girl talk so i'm gonna be reading from my ipad um it's a post that came up in my memories on yesterday actually uh, from march 2019 and it goes on to, it says, most women that make posts stating, I don't have time for love and all, um, you know, these anti-love and anti-relationship posts, really what they want is a loving relationship. They often want a committed relationship, okay? You, you know, sometimes out of bitterness, disappointment, anger, frustration, you know, sometimes we give up on things that we really desire, okay? We give up on things because it's like, well, it's not happening. So now I'm at a place where I'm, let me go ahead and start speaking against this. Let me go ahead and start speaking down on this. Um, and it's almost, it's in the, I guess, in the attempt to really to protect your feelings, okay? Um, I, I've never... I've never experienced um, when you hear the phrase, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. That was never my experience. However, my experience was always at a baby shower and it's never mine. Okay. So even though these are two completely different things, um, you know, relationships versus trying to conceive. For me, I often, I feel like I understand when, you know, when women are um, making these posts sometimes. Now, let me say this. There are some women out there that are extremely, they're good. They are content. They're single. They are enjoying life. They don't desire to be in a, um, they don't desire to be a wife. They don't desire to be in a committed relationship. They're good, okay? Let me also say there are women out there who have no desire to be a parent. They don't want children. They don't want to raise children. They are content in life. They have other goals. They have other visions for their life. And they don't desire children. Let me say, if that is you, that's a beautiful place to be. When you are truly at a place of, when you're at a place of, I guess, you're, 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 you're at peace, okay? Um, and um, again, you're at peace maybe because you're like, yeah, I know everybody around here my age is getting pregnant or they saying I should be doing this. I should be, you know, trying to find me a husband or whatever. And you're like... I am absolutely at a place in my life where I am good. I don't have to have a man in my life. Um, well, let's be real. None of us have to have a man, but you know what I'm saying. Um, and you are, you know, or maybe, you know, maybe you're married. Maybe, you know, you're booed up somewhere, but you still don't want children. Beautiful. Don't allow anyone to talk you out of your peaceful space. Okay. Um, 
this is more so for that for the woman who desires to be booed up the woman who desires to be in a committed relationship but the words that are coming out of her mouth the things that she posts are saying opposite and remember she, you know they're they're doing this because they're trying to protect protect their heart okay so like I said, I, I never experienced the, you know, always a bride's may never a bride, but I definitely had my share of, God, when when is it going to be my baby shower? Okay. So a little um, background information. My husband and I, we were married six years before we um, had our first child. We, we have two boys now at um, ages eight and 10. When my husband and I got married, in 2003 we immediately went in with the desire to have children okay so from from day one that was our goal we wanted to be parents after years and years of trying to conceive being unsuccessful we um i became bitter i became bitter i became angry um and if i'm being honest i was really upset with god Okay. And I'm I feel like I can be honest because God knows my heart. Okay. Um, I got to a place where I started saying I didn't want children. I started writing my journal, I didn't want children, you know, I'm good. I started finding every reason why I didn't need children and um almost like you know how good my life would be without children. But remember, I was coming from a place of disappointment anger frustration let down um so i wasn't being honest with myself and i i i went through this for about six months lying to myself basically went through this for about six months and one day i was you know had been in prayer and and god i just i it, it became very clear to me that i'm lying I do want children. I do want, I want to have children one day. And I'm only saying these things because I'm tired of being disappointed. I'm tired of being let down. And I feel like maybe if I psych myself out, that I'll become okay with it. The moment that I be, was honest with myself and, you know, again, I was honest that I want children. I'm only saying these things because it hasn't happened. I became, I, I felt free. I felt free. It's like I was no longer living a lie. Okay. Um, soon afterwards, we were blessed. We were finally blessed with that positive pregnancy test that we had been praying many years um, to receive. Unfortunately, um, four months into that pregnancy, I miscarried. And let me just say, I had to experience that bitterness, frustration, anger all over again. You see, now I'm coming from a place of, God, why did you allow this to happen? God, if you knew that I was going to get pregnant only to miscarry, why did I even get pregnant? So I'm, again, I am angry. Now, I never went back to the place of saying I didn't want children. Um, because at that point, I mean, it, the desire, it, it is what it is. I knew I wanted children. I went, um, I miscarried and it was, that was October um, 2007. And for a couple of months, I was at a really low place in life. I was at, I was very depressed just questioning, you know, I had, you know, so many, so just, just, I was lost and put it like that. I was extremely lost. Um, because I just didn't understand why, why I do believe in life. You will have some questions that you may never get an answer to. In hindsight, um, I do believe that Many of us, we go through things 
as um, so that we can be a testimony. Okay. Um, again, like I said, I never really, I never dealt with the, you know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. But doggone it, I was at the place where I was like, I, I'm not going to anybody's baby shower. When I would be in a store and I would see pregnant women, I would try to look off. When people, you know, they had newborn babies and everybody would be like, you know, don't know the baby. I didn't want to look at the baby, you know. Um, eventually, we were blessed to get pregnant again. And I'm, let's just be real. I was a nervous wreck, okay, because I got trust issues now. I got trust issues. I'm pregnant, but am I going to stay pregnant? Okay. And I imagine a lot of women, they go in with those trust issues. Okay. You got this per new person in your life, but I, I don't know because I've been let down. I've been let down. I've been let down. Um, now, you know, looking back, I do believe that all that I experienced was to be able to um, share my story with other women. But again, it came with being honest and being transparent. I would be um, around other women and I would, you know, I would talk about, you know, how, how much I wanted children and stuff. And, and there are some women that are, I'm sure, watching this that know my story, you know, they know me personally and they um, were there with me, you know, probably, you know, a few times, you know, probably heard me cry. And, um, but I'm, I'm so grateful that God, he answered my prayer, but I believe in my heart, had I stayed at a place of I'm just being um, lying to myself, I think had I stayed at that place, I would not have opened my heart to what God had in store for me. And I say this to the, the women that are watching this video, be honest. If you know in your heart that you desire certain things, be honest. Be honest. Um, yes, God knows your heart. He, he, know, he knows your heart, okay? But imagine, think about a child. You know deep down that your child wants something. But they're lying and saying, I don't want that, I don't want that. And you're like, okay, well, fine. You don't want it, fine. But the moment that they're like, I do, I just said I didn't because I'm hurting and I'm tired of being disappointed. And then you're like, okay, just be honest. I'm not saying that being honest and transparent is going to fix anything, but I sure know lying about it won't fix it either. Okay? Self-assess. Um, figure out, like I said, where, you know, where are you when, you, when you're with, when you're saying certain things, where is it coming from? Again, is it coming from a place of bitterness or is it coming from a place of consent? Like I'm happy. I'm at peace. Um, self-assess, self-reflect. And I feel like if you are that woman that you realize once you self-reflect and you self-assess and you realize I have been saying I don't want this simply because I'm tired because it hasn't happened and I feel like this is a way for me to protect my heart. I want to challenge you to be honest. Be honest. If you're a praying woman, be honest in your prayers. There's power in words, okay? Be careful about what you put in the atmosphere. Before I met my husband, I was in I was in a relationship with this guy uh, for over six years. But after a few years, it became very um, it became very evident that he was not going to be my husband, okay? Um, maybe a month or so before I met my husband, I decided that I wanted to start writing what I wanted in my ideal husband. Because I, I truly believe in writing the vision, 
My grandmother used to always say, you know, hey, a closed mouth don't get fed. And the word says you you have not because you ask not. There are certain things in life that certain things that are that are that's in God's will for you. And there are certain things that is not in God's will for you. Um, and just because it's in God's will doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come easy like that. OK, but again, if you're that woman that, you know, deep down, I want a relationship. I want to be a wife, but I've told myself I didn't because I'm tired of being hurt and disappointed. I challenge you to be honest. I challenge you to be transparent. And I challenge you to write the vision. Again, um, about a month before I met my husband, I started, I just wrote all this stuff out. And I had, I had pages, okay? Now, did he meet everything on that list? It was, I'm going to be honest, it, it could have been about 50 things on there. No, absolutely not. He's not perfect, neither am I, okay? But there were some non-negotiables on there. Like, there were some things that absolutely, this has to be, this has to be, this cannot be. Period, point blank, okay? And when I tell you, he is my 80-20. He is my 80-20. Sometimes he's more like 90-10. Sometimes he's more like 75-25. But I was not afraid to ask for what I wanted. I was not afraid to believe God for what was the desire in my heart. Okay? Even with children, before we uh, found out in 2009 that I was pregnant, I believe God, I, I just, I, I was believing God for children, okay? My husband and I, we wrote down um, some names on a piece of paper, prayed over those names, went outside and planted those names because that was like my, me planting my seed. Um, my seed of faith went out there, folded those names up again, planted that seed of that faith. And literally a few weeks later, I found out I was pregnant. Don't be afraid to believe God. Um, don't be af don't be afraid to 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 believe God for his promises. Don't be afraid to have a vision. Don't be afraid to dream. Write it down. Again, I'm not saying that it's just going to happen. But again, if you are a woman of faith, trust that there is power and words and there's life and death in the tongue. Be careful again what you put out in the atmosphere. Be careful what you're writing. And be prepared and start expecting God to do great things in your life. I wish you well. And I hope that if you're being honest with yourself, um, and you know that you want these things, even if it's a baby. Like I said, I for me, it was the baby. It wasn't the man. Start trusting again. Start believing again. Um, again, I can't say that, boom, it's going to happen. But there's no harm in believing. Okay? Until next time, enjoy your day. And remember, every woman needs a little girl talk. Peace out.